tell you a car that's really been moving is Ricky Craven. He has moved up to the 13th position now. He came up about six or seven laps ago. He was catching uh, Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon. Came up and just blew them off and went right on. He is uh, started in 14th. And he dropped way back in the field. And now he's moving back up towards the front. His car's working good. This is only his second start of 2000. He ran Las Vegas starting 29th and finishing in 40th spot. Jeff Gordon is running in 14th. And again, Terry Labonte is a lap down in 27th. Jeff Gordon has not led yet today. Started in 11th spot. Has been as high as second and as low as 35th right now, 14th. He's passed a lot of race cars. He's uh, been back at the back. You know, he had that uh, penalty for leaving the tires out on one of the, the stops early in the race. He went to the back of the field. So he has passed a lot of race cars. As Dale Earnhardt trying to pass a race car now. That moves Dale Earnhardt into fifth spot past Ward Burton. And Ricky Rudd, we see him back there. Rudd has a good race car. That technical car is good today because we've seen that brake rotor. And the fact that it isn't cherry red all the way down the straightaway tells me he's really not pushing his car that hard. He gets on the inside of Ward Burton and takes over the sixth spot. Well, he's going to. Trust me. Give him time, he will. I said it wasn't going to rain yesterday. Trust me. <laughs> Tell you what, if I say it's not going to rain, you better build an ark, folks. <laughs> Marty Reed, Benny Parsons, Dave Burns, and Amy East will be with you at 1.30. I'm sorry, Jerry Punch. Marty went on vacation, huh? Oh, he did it? Yeah, so Jerry Punch will be with you tomorrow. He uh, had scheduled a, uh, a cruise or something and had plans to leave today so he did jerry punch and bp will be with you tomorrow at 1 30 for the napa 250 nascar craftsman truck series race here at martinsville rained out yesterday there is mark martin who is running in the fourth spot martin once again uh, carrying the max life colors on that car Valvoline's long life oil. And Dale Earnhardt now begins to close in on Martin. And once again, Rusty Wallace has his hands full with a bunch of slower cars. And some of them running side by side. That's going to be a tough situation. There's the second place car of Sterling Marlin. He should be able to move up on Rusty some as Rusty fights that traffic. Of course, Marlin is back about three and a quarter seconds. And once again, just to tell you that Rich Bickle has pulled away from Sterling Marlin. He was not able to keep up with Rusty Wallace, but he has pulled away from Sterling Marlin. Third and fourth positions, Bobby Labonte looking back on Mark Martin. 23 cars on the lead lap. Mark Martin has the best average short track finish in the 1990s overall. 3.1. Trying to get to the inside of Labonte. Ooh, put a little dent in the car there. Well, as Rusty works his way through traffic, he is now 2.5 seconds ahead of Sterling Marlin, going to the outside of Robert Presley and putting him down a lap for the first time. Robert is running in 23rd position. Just eight laps away from the halfway point of the Goodies Body Pain 500. You keep an eye on the websites your kids are looking at. You make sure your wife's cell phone battery is fully charged. And you haven't missed a day of work in 12 years. So it comes as no surprise that your auto parts are AC Delco. When the right way.
is the only way. AC Delco Automotive Parts. Right now at Sonic, get three big tastes for just 99 cents each. Try our Double Decker Junior Double Cheeseburger, Tater Tot smothered with cheese, or a creamy single topping sundae, each just 99 cents this month only. Sonic America's driving. The other day I tell my dad that I just totaled my car. He freaks. <laughs> when he calms down, I explain to him about this stuff. Black Magic Total Shine. It's brand new. It's so cool. It shines and protects the inside and the outside of your car. So you don't need anything else. Just wipe it on paint, vinyl, plastic, and chrome. Then wipe it off for a totally awesome shine. You know what he says to me then? When are you going to total my car? Yeah, great. New Black Magic Total Shine. The only way to total your car. The day's not over yet. Do you stop at Red Roof Inn and get a room you can always count on? Or take your chances somewhere else? Ah, the room that time forgot. Hey, Mr. Tubel, why don't you change your oil every 3,000 miles? And remember, women know when you lie. Look, missing an oil change is like giving a woman a vacuum cleaner for her birthday. You know better. Come on, consider the risk. This is reformulated Quaker State. Protection beyond 3,000 miles under any driving conditions. Can you say insurance? Because I could say I told you so. Reformulated Quaker State. It's been tested. It works. What more do you need to know? If you think all ATVs were created equal, you've never ridden a Yamaha. Kodiak 400 automatic and Big Bear 400 from Yamaha. Because out here, bears rule. Now, get low payments on every Yamaha ATV, starting at just $69 a month during Yamaha All Terrain Value Days. ESPN's NASCAR Winston Cup coverage this week is at the shortest and slowest track. Next week, we go to the longest and the fastest at Talladega. Bud Cole qualifying coverage at 4 o'clock Friday on ESPN2. The Touchstone Energy NASCAR Bush Series race Saturday at 3.30. And you can catch our happy hour coverage next Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. Now on Sunday... It'll begin with RPM today at 11 o'clock. Bill Weber has the NASCAR Today program at 11.30. Make note of that. That's about an hour and a half ahead of the actual start of the race. And you can see coverage of the Die Hard 500 on ABC at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Ray Evernham will join us in the booth. And then after that, the Saturday IROC 24 race number two can be seen at 5 o'clock again on ABC. So we look forward to going to Talladega this coming week for high bank, high speed racing. Right now it's Rusty Wallace who is really dominating this event here this afternoon. We are coming up on three laps past the halfway point and Rusty so far today has led 232 of the last. We've had four leaders. Oh, four Rusty Wallace, looks like the right front tire is going flat on Rusty oh, Wallace's Rusty car. He wants to get down so he can get in the pits. Now he finally does do that. No caution. No reason for one. What happens is the brakes are so good on these race cars anymore, and they don't realize how much they're using, and it melts the inside of the tire. Bill Weber, he's coming to you. And this will be a painful limp down pit road at 35 miles an hour. Smoke coming from the right front tire. Robin Peppermint coaching him into his spot. As Bob was saying, Rusty has dominated this race in a car he's only used twice before. They're going to have trouble getting the jack under the car. Now they lift the car and slide the jack underneath. Bill Wilbur pulls the right front tire off. They put on the right side tires. They're going to go ahead and do four. Rusty will play with this race day screen, losing valuable laps on the track. Left side going on. This car, two starts, has never had a top 10 minute. Battle back, recap to the four minute showcase so far today. And Bobby Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, and Ricky Rudd have gone by Sterling Marley and Earnhardt going for the lead in three. And Rudd coming up to second position now as he gets to the outside of Labonte. And Tony Stewart has also joined this in the Home Depot car. Wow, things got exciting there all of a sudden, Bob. First five cars now running nose to tail after Rusty had the problem. And let's see, where did Rusty drop back to? 31st position? Wow. 
a nice tough couple, break for, couple laps down, Bob. Yeah. That's like, boy, a tough break for Rusty, who, just as we said, was dominating. Here's what happened to him. He goes in the corner, and all of a sudden that right front goes flat, and the car goes straight. That's what happened to the 16 of Kevin LePage yesterday. LePage hit the wall, and Rusty is fortunate that he is able to stop the car before he gets to the wall. Now let's listen. He speeded up the track. I tell you, he was fortunate not to be able to, to, he was fortunate to keep it off the wall and not hit the wall. So Dale Earnhardt now has gone to the lead. He's leading his fourth race of the year 2000. And all of a sudden, Sterling Marlin, who was so good earlier, has fallen back to the sixth position. Are they in some heavy traffic? Look at all of that beating and banging coming off the turn. Mike Skinner and Tony Stewart exchange some paint. Stewart's got a huge donut on the right side of that Home Depot Pontiac. Now we had a report that Mike Skinner, maybe the battery might be going down and that, that it's not hitting on all eight third, doesn't have all the power that it needs. Well, you know, if after a while on these tires and the track is getting a little bit slicker, that might not hurt him as bad as it would have if he had new tires on it. And we see some pretty serious damage to the right side of the Home Depot Pontiac. Number 11 car of Brett Bodine that started fourth has gone a lap down. He's in 23rd position. You know the handle went away on Brett's car. Yep. Rusty Wallace, Rusty trying to move up through the field. Get some of those laps down. Get at least one of his two laps down. He's now in 30th spot, two laps down. And he can pass the leaders, you know, and then a caution come out. Yeah. And uh, that bunches him up. Well, you know, there he goes by Mike Skinner. He's got new tires on. He needs to have a fast race car all day anyway. He could possibly get back those laps if the circumstances were right. Bill, what's that tire look like? Oh, my. Well, it's not the one you want to pull out of your trunk, Bob, if you've already got a problem. But what they're saying here, and Benny, you can walk us through this a little bit more, but they're saying that the belt inside the bead here just gave way, and that's what snapped, and that's what basically took the tire away. So that can happen through a variety of causes. The heat, basically wear and tear, sometimes it just happens. But obviously for Rusty, very bad timing. I think heat is the biggest enemy there, Bill. I, the, the brakes, are, as I said, are so good, they get that tire so hot that sometimes it just melts. And look how much faster he is than the leader, Dale Earnhardt, with those four fresh tires. And that was really good strategy on the team's part to go ahead and change four while he was in there rather than just change the affected right side tire. He's about three seconds behind Dale Earnhardt as he passes Bobby Lovato, who's running in third place. And there's Earnhardt in, in traffic, so Rusty still has some time to make up before he can get one of those laps back. And Earnhardt finally caught, and we see Tony Stewart on the inside of his teammate, Bobby Labonte. I was going to say Earnhardt finally caught Rich Bickle in the 60 power team car. Jerry, what about Marlin, who's now back to sixth? Well, Bob, about the same time Rusty had his problem with that cut tire, melted bead, Sterling Marlin began to yell that the car had just gotten suddenly loose. Ned Berry had definitely picked up a moment ago. The track is getting slicker and slicker, which is why you're seeing Mike Skinner's car run better, even though he's down on power. But Sterling Marlin's car is so loose, Scott Eggleston, the crew chief, says, just hang in there. If we can get a caution flag, we'll take a rubber out of the rear. That'll probably fix it. But right now, Marlin just trying to hang on to a top six position. And Earnhardt moving through traffic now. He is putting Rich Bickle a lap down in 21st. Now comes up on Stacy Compton, who's running 20th. And watching very closely is Rookie Rudd and Rusty Wallace. Wallace is that close to getting one of the two laps back. Boy, he made that three seconds. He was behind a mention a moment ago up in a hurry. 
And I remember back about 10 years ago when Harry Gant was going for four in a row or three in a row or something here at and I, he was involved in the crash, something similar to what Rusty went through. And I said, well, unfortunately, Harry won't win his whatever today. And guess what? I remember that very well, BP. I tell you, Rusty Wallace still believes he can win this race. I'll guarantee you that he thinks he can still win this race. But now he's having to drive that thing harder than he's driven it all day. Could the same thing happen again? Let's be careful about that. Here he comes up on Bernhardt, the leader. That's Dale just ahead. Mike Bliss to the right. Look at Rusty. <laughs> yeah, he's going to give it a whirl here. He's on the inside of Rusty. He's got that position, and he goes by Earnhardt. The best thing that could happen to Rusty right now would be for the caution to come out. Yep. I'm not sure, Ned. I'm not sure that he doesn't need to run long enough for the all these okay. other cars to make it. Good out. point. Good point. Yeah. If they, if they had to stop under green, then that would put him back in the lead. Really. And then the caution flag yeah. come out. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. So Rusty Wallace is now just one lap down in 28th position. The leader is Dale Earnhardt, followed by Rudd, Stewart, Skinner, and Bobby Labonte. You know, my first racing days were pretty rough. With my wheels set so close together, I was always getting loose in the turns. Now that I'm trading paint with the big boys, wider is better. With speed-sensitive steering, the White Track Grand Prix delivers precise control in the corners. No wonder it's been selected official pace car of NASCAR. There's no getting around it. Wider is The White Track Grand Prix. Wider is better. By Pontiac. Wagner brakes make any car feel high performance. Yep, they're Wagner brakes. So choose Wagner from the world's leader in brake pads. You've really been wanting a satellite dish, haven't you? You want all the sports. You want all the movies. But you're concerned. Hey, Radio Shack explains everything. And for a limited time, Radio Shack will install it for free. Just buy an RCA Direct TV system for only $99.99, and you'll get free Radio Shack professional standard installation when you sign up for Total Choice Programming. And up to $400 to use in the store when you sign up for MSN Internet Service. Radio Shack. Uh, whoa! Mmm, lawn weeds, huh, Pete? Yeah. All you need is Ortho Weed Be Gone. Kills more weeds than other brands. Didn't hurt my lawn. We guarantee it. Leave it to Ortho. Well, they're two down in the top of the seventh. These guys are going to make a comeback. They better get the bats going soon. Don't you wish you could scratch and get a million dollars? Play Nap is a million thanks instant win game. There are thousands of other prizes, too. Plus, you'll save on hundreds of items. It's our way of thanking you for the last 75 years. Stop by a participating Napa Auto Parts store today. 15 years ago, I gave John his start. I ordered the first Papa John's pizza. No, it was me. I said, John, this pizza's got great stuff on it. Join our celebration. Get two large one-topping Papa John's pizzas for just $12.99. Get it straight. It was me. I said, this sauce is special. Me, 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 me. Hey, wasn't it you that ordered the first pizza? Well, I am your mom. Get two large one-topping Papa John's pizzas for only $12.99. It's our way of thanking all our loyal customers. Dale Earnhardt leading the Goodies Body Pain 500 here at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia by about nine-tenths of a second over Ricky Rudd. There is Rusty Wallace, and this is how much he's been able to pull away from Earnhardt since he passed him and got one of his two laps back. But if Dale Earnhardt were to pit now and change four tires, he probably could do almost the same thing to Rusty Wallace. This race back, like all others, those fresh tires makes the car so much faster. Well, there are a lot of cars that are slipping and sliding around out there. Being, I don't know how far we need to go before they be scheduled for a stop, but it shouldn't be too long. And here's one car that has been sliding in the last uh, few laps. Mar uh, Mark Martin up ahead of Dale Jarrett. Yeah, we saw Mark up there in fourth place about 30 laps ago, but now he's struggling to hold on to the uh, eighth position. 
John Kernan, what's the problem with Mark? About 15 laps ago, Mark radioed in and told his crew chief, Jimmy Finnegan, the car just would not work in the middle of the turns. It looks like he's moved up a lane in the, uh, in the turns just to see if it'll handle there. But the car has gotten very loose on him, so Mark has a real handful. And also, Dale Jarrett's car doesn't want to work down low in the corners either. Jarrett taking, however, the eighth position away from Martin. And here's Jeremy Mayfield, his own pit road. We heard earlier that his car was not working very good, and so he followed as long as he could. He decided to come in and get some new tires and some adjustments on his Ford. He make a chassis adjustment back on the left rear, left front. again Jerry how'd it go down there John Kernan Jeremy Mayfield's car had been very very loose but also another problem on it he told them the uh, brake pedal was stuck halfway down to the floor so they were concerned that that would uh, activate the uh, the pistons and push the brake pads up and hold them up against the rotor and heat things up too much but uh, that doesn't seem to be the main problem right now the main problem is just the handling gone completely away on jeremy mayfield's car i tell you what it it hasn't gone away on that 20 car of tony stewart's no he's he has caught the second and third place car man there oh they man. are just move right up on him not only is this the car that stewart won the pole here a year ago but it is the same car in which he won two races last year. And Michael Waltrip is running in the 18th position in the car number seven. About to go a lap down. And here comes Sterling Marlin. He finally said, I thought this was long as I want to. Let's make a pit stop, make some adjustments, get four tires. Gary? Fighting a very loose race car. Sterling Marlin brings the car number 40, the course machine, to a halt on pit road. He has not won since July of 1996 some 121 races ago at Daytona. Those is a great race car. They make an adjustment to the right rear. They were going to pull a rubber out of the rear. They have yet to do that. Left side tires going on. Second generation driver. Left front lugs are tight. Right, 18.7 second pit stop for Sterling. Here comes Bill Elliott in for a stop. Here's Bill Weber. And it's been a good run for Bill Elliott to this point. He has one of the tricky pit stalls here on pit road, right at one of the bends along pit road. This will be a four-tire change in fuel. We've also got the 88 on pit road. He's getting right side tires as well. Now they come around to the left side on the 94, putting on the left side and fueling it. Elliott waiting. Tires are on. Fuel is in. He goes back out on pit road. Left sides are good on the 88. He pulls out of hit pit, hit pit stall and begins to charge down pit road. Now the 20 is also on pit road. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Might be the comeback of the day for Ward Burton. Remember that big win at Darlington has pumped this team up. Caterpillar team, if you just joined us, had a stop and go penalty for a two tire change because the right front tire was not back across the wall. Now, Tommy Baldwin and the Bill Davis crew go to work. Right side tires, clean the windshield, scurrying to the left side. They got a good pit stop going here. Also, the car number 24 is in. Jeff Gordon back to the 22 car. Left side tires on. Ward Burton down and away as he will race Johnny Benson off of pit road. And we see Jeff Gordon completing his pit stop. Left side is up. And down and away Jeff Gordon goes. And I wonder if Tony Stewart might have run out of gas. He was really slow coming off a of turn two, but now he's in the pits. Let's go to the pits and John Kearney. Ned, that's exactly what happened. They'll spray the either the starter fluid in. He finally gets the engine refired. They just told him to get the next time by. As he was coming out of turn two, he said, hey, I'm out of fuel. Dead stick. Now they, if the engine died again, they're trying to get it started. It finally fires back up. Uh-oh, the change on the go. Traffic adjustments and the 18 is teammate Bobby Labonte is on pit road. And the leader about to come in, first and second about to come into the pits as Bobby Labonte gets his service and back out. Here comes Earnhardt and Rudd. And here comes Earnhardt and Rudd and Steve Park. 35 miles an hour again is pit road speed. 
No speedometers in these cars. They must do it with the tachometers. Bill Weber, they're coming to you. Well, the guys that have been running up front now come down pit road one, two. Earnhardt and the 28 of Ricky Rudd. Earnhardt slides into his stall, so does Rudd. Right side for the three. It'll be a four-tire stop for both cars. Earnhardt has not said a thing on the radio. Ricky said his car's been getting better and better throughout the afternoon. Left side's on the three. They swing around. Left side's on the 28, cleaning the windshield on the 28. Now the 28 away and the three. Identical stop, virtually identical on the stopwatch. They come out the same way they came in. And we have 200 laps to go here. The 31 car of Mike Skinner also works down pit road as Mark Martin gets service on the left side of his Valvoline Ford, and he is on his way again. Down to Jerry as Skinner pits. Mike Skinner has been cutting the brake coolers on and off and the rear end coolers on and off. He's been very busy in the race car. The crew told him, if you have nine volts or more on the meter, we will not change the battery on a green flag stop. If you have nine volts, and Mike said it is barely at nine volts, so they are not going to change the battery. They need a caution flag not to lose a lap. Four tires, he's away. Second stop for the Mike Skinner crew. And guess who is in third place on the lead lap? Yeah, and as soon as those other two cars stop, he'll be in first place. And there, Michael Waltrip. And How long can he go without a pit stop is the question. The 36 yeah. car Schrader is uh, the leader. Yeah, that's one I was trying to, yeah. to say. It would be good, uh, Rusty, as Benny had pointed out, if after everybody made their green flag pit stops, if he could get a caution, that's what he would like to have. I mean, he's only been out there for 50 laps right yeah. now, so and he can run easily probably another 100 laps. And as good as this car has been, I think this car will, as soon as these other cars get to some laps on their tires, and he should be about as good as any of them. There's the leader, Ken Schrader, who is leading for the first time in the NASCAR Winston Cup 2000 season. Michael Waltrip is second, then Rusty, Earnhardt, and Rudd. These guys are the best golf custom fitters in Battle Creek. Thought you'd like to know where they do their work. This staff provides golf's most perfect customer service. You probably know where they do their work. Pro Golf Discount, 3905 West Dickman Road, Battle Creek. Your company's IPO is the most successful in history. I'm not surprised. And investors appear very confident. Of course they are, Linda. So, do you have a satellite dish or AT&T digital cable? A dish. Really? Then you can't even get local channels unless you pay more. Really? Digital cable gives you lots more channels than before. Right through the cable that you already have. Do you care to comment? Mr. Vickers? AT&T Digital sure. Cable. It's smarter. Are you crying? Are you crying? <laughs> There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. Roger Hornsby was my manager. And he called me a talking pile of pig slop. And that was when my parents drove all the way from Michigan to see me play the game. Did I cry? No, no. And you know why? <laughs> because there's no crying in baseball. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. Under caution once again here at Martinsville Speedway for the 10th time, Jimmy Spencer spinning out on the racetrack. And now Rusty Wallace is going to make a pit stop. You know, I'm not sure that he can do this and not get lapped. If because at 35 miles per hour, Rusty was at the very end of the line. There's a leader, uh, Kenny Schrader, said, Bill, wherever he's there in front of you now. They've talked it over. They are going to try and do four. The spotter is going to watch the pace car. Rusty definitely wants to get the four if they can. Good stop on the right side. The pace car coming out of four. Now they swing to the left side. Jack underneath. Left front is on. Left rear is on. Tightening the lug nuts. Rusty is away. He'll easily beat the pace car from the outhouse to the penthouse for these guys. Man, oh man, you're so right, Bill. 
how the complexion of this race changed so dramatically with just a single caution play. Man. Because two cars had not made pit stops. Kenny Schrader and Michael Waltrip had not made pit stops. And Rusty had gotten back on the lead lap. And so it's going to be just three cars on the lead lap. Now, some of these that had made pit stops will not stop. So they'll be in front of the other uh, other cars but technically they'll be a lap down and this is why the tenth caution is currently waving there we see contact between jimmy spencer and uh, tony stewart i believe looks like it oh man he spins right on yeah. jeff burton goes by on the outside no other car involved but man it was close and a little contact there between elliott and martin on the slowdown a seven car of Michael Waltrip make a, makes a pit stop, John. Michael Waltrip stayed out a couple extra laps in order to lead a lap and pick up five bonus points. It's a four-tire change. The only problem with the car is a little bit loose at the end of the run, so they made an air pressure adjustment. It's Jerry Punch. This caution flag a big break for Mike Skinner. As the green came back out, the engine began to sputter and miss. He wouldn't have run but a few more laps, but they just came in a moment ago. Changed the battery in the left side. Took him about 35 seconds. But Skinner changed the battery as he will head back onto the racetrack trying to get his first ever Winston Cup victory. Back with more live coverage from Martinsville in just a moment. And they love their high-performance Briggs & Stratton engines. That's why just about every neighborhood in America is a Briggs & Stratton neighborhood. Briggs and Stratton, the power that works for you. Polaris has sold more automatic ATVs than everyone else combined. And to celebrate building their one millionth automatic, they're giving one million dollars to someone who buys a new Polaris ATV this year. It could be you. Polaris millionth automatic million dollar giveaway. The chase is on. See your Polaris dealer for contest details. You know, my first racing days were pretty rough. With my wheels set so close together, I was always getting loose in the turns. Now that I'm trading paint with the big boys, wider is better. With speed sensitive steering, the White Track Grand Prix delivers precise control in the corners. No wonder it's been selected official pace car of NASCAR. There's no getting around it. Wider is White Track Grand Prix. Wider is better. By Pontiac. At Marksville Speedway, Virginia, ESPN's coverage of the Goodies Body Pain 500 being brought to you by Briggs & Stratton. The power that works for you. By Polaris ATVs. If you're going to ride, ride the best. Polaris. And by the White Track Pontiac Grand Prix. Proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. Under our 10th caution here at lap 314, Kenny Schrader is the leader, and Rusty Wallace is second, followed by the seven car of Michael Waltrip, then Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd. While we remain under caution, we'll sneak in another quick break and be back for green flag racing in a moment. Life has its bumps, but you don't have to feel them. Now Midas Gold Struts with R2 technology are only $59.95 each with a lifetime guarantee. Go smoothly. Go Midas. This place for that kind of money? Not what you need to hear. Then stay here at Super 8. Clean, comfortable rooms because we inspect them more than any major economy chain. Clean, friendly, Super 8. All the room you want. <laughs> Missed the spot. Presenting the day at the Gordons, where racing champion Jeff Gordon and his wife Brooke eat new Fritos chili and scoops, a hearty cup of chili and loads of Fritos corn chips. It's fast. It's filling. It's Fritos. Perfect for people on the go. New Fritos chili and scoops and sloppy Joe and scoops. Nothing goes faster. Today was a good day. I sent my grandkids off to Istanbul alone. Alone. Got rid of my cousin Oliver. Yeah! Today, I heard voices. 
Today was a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye-bye, Grandpa. Bye, kids. Ciao, you old bugger. Yeah! I've heard voices. Oh, no. yeah, I'm use the Fantastic day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The green flag has just come out here at Martinsville Speedway to resume the Goodies Body Pain 500. We're watching the cars running up front now. The number three car, Dale Earnhardt, is actually fourth in the running. And a similar situation happened at Texas last week. The leader of the race is back in the middle of the field. There is the leader, Ken Schrader. Okay. Most everyone had made a pit stop, excepting Ken Schrader and Michael Walker. Okay. When the caution came out, everybody else was at least one lap down, excepting Rusty Wallace. He had gotten back on the lead lap, so now they're just... There were three cars that were on the lead lap, excepting those that made the pit stop. And when, when those three cars made their pit stop, they had to come out behind those that... Uh, we're technically on the lead lap, so that's what we got going on. We got about uh, 14, 15, let's see, 13 cars like that that are almost a lap down, but not quite. And the uh, 16th place car of John Andretti is right ahead of the leader. Now you see the two car in the 36. That is a battle for the lead. I know you don't understand that, but that, <laughs> trust me, is a battle for the lead. And, Bill, and the car number 43 of John Andretti is fighting for his life to stay on the lead lap. He was one of those cars, and now he's about to go a lap down. In 16th position. Down to Bill Weber. Well, Rusty Wallace obviously battling for the lead right now. Before the green flag came back out, Robin Pemberton got on the radio, and he said, the traffic here is going to be terrible. Please be extra patient. Rusty drove down the front stretch under caution, gave his team a big thumbs up. As they lined up for the restart, someone jumped on Rusty's radio and said, this is going to be horrendous. Rusty said, I know. One other note on this team, car owner Roger Penske is here. He got here about an hour before the green flag fell. He flew in from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, where the cart race was postponed. Because of bad weather, including a little snow, now here is Rusty right on the back bumper of the 36 car. John Andretti still hanging tough on the outside, trying to stay on the lead lap. The last driver with back-to-back -back wins at a short track was Jarrett in 97 at Bristol and in Richmond. Rusty, of course, won at Bristol a few weeks ago. And Kenny Schrader is leading for only the second time in his career at Martinsville in 31 starts. The last time he led here was in September of 1990, almost a decade ago. Tim Ward Burton has moved up in the last star wins cup once the second spot as they run now. And John Andretti got back on the lead lap. You see, now Rusty passing the yep, straighter on the outside. Lead. Rusty Wallace going for the lead once again. And he's going to get it. The 99 car of Jeff Burton running right there with this group of cars is in 17th position. A lap down. And Dale Earnhardt in fourth place is 15 and a third seconds behind Rusty Wallace. Well, almost a wreck couple of laps ago. Look at Skinner get loose. Comes off the corner, and I don't think he realizes that Joe Nemechek is there, and when he tries to steer away from Nemechek, almost spun out. Now Rusty drives on the inside of John Andretti. And once again, tries to put him a lap down. The third place car is Michael Waltrip. There he is. Last year Earnhardt was third. Yes, he is fourth place car. 15 now, 15 seconds behind the leader. Michael Waltrip trying to turn his season around. He's 29th in points. A year ago at this time, he was 10th in the point standings. We're talking about Earnhardt, he's, he's way out in front. He has clear sailing out in front of him. We'll see how much distance there is. Here we'll see him come off that corner there in a little bit. There he is, fourth place car. DJ not too far behind him. So they're not in danger of going to lap down at all now because Rusty back there in that traffic. Well, 
Well, yeah, he's probably better off back where he is now, out of that traffic than he, than he would be up there racing with Rusty Wallace because Rusty has his hands full with all those cars trying to stay on the lead lap. That's Dale Jarrett. He's fourth. Fifth. I'm sorry, fifth. Tony Stewart is sixth. And John Andretti is still racing hard with Rusty Wallace. He really is trying to get back on that lead lap. He was one of those that was a victim of circumstances. It took just 74 laps for Rusty Wallace to get his two laps back that he lost when the tire blew. Now, I'm sure a lot of fans out there remember seeing, I mentioned that Michael Waltrip was running in 19th position and he got, got left. And they say, well, how in the world did he get up there and running in second place? Well, he uh, stayed out there and didn't pit. If you pit here at Martinsville on the green flag, you're going to lose two laps. 77 of Robert Presley, 19th, the lap down. There is Michael, who started back in 34th position and finds himself up in third. Best finish this year was at the other short track race that we've had at Bristol. He started 23rd and finished 11th. His best finish here in Martinsville came in at this race in 1991. He finished 7th. You can see there are 15 cars on the lead lap. And here's the battle between Mark Martin and Ward Burton. And for 10th, Ned. I saw some smoke out of the six car, I believe. It's a pretty good damage to the right front of Mark Martin's car. 6, 1, 2, and 12 are all battling for position. 10th, 11th, and 12th. Let's get down to John Kernan once again. You brought up the, uh, the point that Mark Martin, you saw a little puff of smoke. Well, one of the drivers behind him radioed his crew just a few laps ago and said, Mark's blowing out some grease. Mark's blowing out some grease. So we'll have to keep an eye on the six car. So far, we've been monitoring them on the radio and haven't heard anything as of yet from that team. But it has been reported that there's grease or some kind of fluid coming out of the six car. Brett Bedine in car number 11. Brett is two laps down. He is being shown in the 28th position. You know, as we've watched Rusty Wallace, we, he has had the dominant car all day. And look at right behind him, John Andretti. Now, it would lead me to believe that John Andretti, that he should drive away from Andretti. I think Rusty Wallace is really, really taking it easy right now. I think he's terrified of what might happen to that right front tire again if he runs that hard. Mm -hmm. And right now, there, there, right now, there's no reason to run hard. He has a second and a half lead on Kenny Schrader, and he has about a 12-second lead on Dale Earnhardt. 160 laps to go here at the Goodies Body Pain 500. It's Rusty Wallace out front. you drive your family around the neighborhood or the number 21 Sitco Taurus around the NASCAR circuit, you make a lot of pit stops along the way. So from Darlington to Detroit, Bristol to Boston, and just about every place in between, you can count on your local Sitco to keep you going. Gas, food, and conversation. Just what you'd expect from a neighbor. Ten bucks for lunch? I heard of a guy got a brand new car for that. Sounds like a Darrell Waltrip story. Oh, I swear it's true. This guy was at the track, he sees this notice, it says brand new hot rod, 10 bucks. No, it's not a misprint. Stop by and see for yourself. Turns out her husband met this little gal at the track, and he ran off to Tahiti with her. And he told his wife to sell the car and send him the money. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Keep now. Oh, no. Six, now on Kmart. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, Bill Weber, and Dr. Jerry Punch. Back with you at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, the eighth NASCAR Winston Cup race of the year 2000. Has completed 344 laps so far with Rusty Wallace leading and the Pennzoil copter cam providing the aerial shots. So 
if we stay green, guys, are they going to need another pit stop? Uh, yes. I think they will. I think, I think so. it'll be close, yeah. but yeah. I think they will. And if that happens, we'll see some guys probably trying to short stop and change four tires. And we'll see some guys, and we see some contact there between the 60 of Rich Bickle and Elliott in the 94. Elliott is on the lead lap in 15th spot. Will be the next car to go a lap down if Rusty can get around him. Rusty has nowhere to go there right now. <laughs> There's the 60 car of Rich Bickle and Elliott running side by side. A lot of heavy traffic in front of him. Now, we mentioned Dale Earnhardt there a moment ago. He was, uh, what, over 15 seconds behind, but he's cut that down as a result of Rusty being in that traffic. He's cut it down to, let's see, it comes across the start finish line now to 12.7. But now Earnhardt is running in on the traffic at the tail end of that. For a while, he had just clear sailing up there. And we're watching the battle for sixth position here as Ricky Rudd and Tony Stewart trying to decide who's going to run there. That Home Depot car looks like it's been through a shredder, a shredder almost. Yeah, he's not going to win any beauty prizes when this thing's over. He might win the prize, but it will certainly not be a beauty prize. There is the 88 car of Dale Jarrett, who is running in fifth position. Let's get more on Rudd as we go to the pits in Bill Weber. Well, Ricky Rudd certainly was optimistic this morning, and his crew chief, Michael McSwain, said their car was sporty. Now, if you scrape some of the black paint off that car, you might find Ty Dion Orange underneath. Because when Ricky Rudd had his auction and sold everything from Rudd Performance Motorsports, he didn't sell everything. In fact, he kept that chassis that he's running here today. He ran it in six or eight races late last season, liked it, wanted to take it with him, brought it here to Martinsville. They've been good, basically, since they got off the truck. By the way, when that car was at Rudd Performance Motorsports, it was chassis number 28. No kidding. Really? <laughs> How those guys come up with all that useless information now. <laughs> <laughs> car raced here at Martinsville at Loudon, Richmond, Darlington, Phoenix, and Homestead. A uh, little contact there between yeah. Tony Stewart and the 28 car. Of course, this is nothing unusual for the 20 and the 28 here at Martinsville, is it? Last year, it was a different driver in the 28, though. <laughs> the other one was driving it then, and the 20 car, they did have some uh, fun. Rudd has a good run here. And to take over that sixth position, and does. Now let's go under the Texaco Haviland board and see how those brakes are glowing. They appear to me to be getting a little bit brighter, but we have seen those rotors stay red all the way around the racetrack when we've had these chassis cameras on before. It's still hard to believe how much that front tire flexes when he goes down on the corner. And the, boy, the, the technology has improved so much in the braking area. You know, years ago, you couldn't use them a tenth of what they can use them today and expect them to be there at the end of the having break at the end of the race. Ricky Rudd, you see, has moved into the sixth position. Once again, that's our Rebecca's on board camera, our chassis cam, our brake cam. And you can see when Rudd applies the brakes, that rotor just turns cherry red immediately. Kevin LePage is back in the race, the FamilyClick.com. Yeah, there are only two cars that are not on the racetrack. One of them is Mike Bliss. He's shown as off the racetrack, and the 66 car of Daryl Waltrip is shown as out of the race. He will finish in the last position. Now, there are a number of cars. Kevin LePage is 37, 16 laps down. Henry Irwin is... 34 laps down. Kyle Petty is 57 laps down. If you watch Rusty Wallace, the leader, he's still in traffic. He hasn't gotten around Bill Elliott yet to put him a lap down. The biggest deficit to make up is Kenny Wallace, who's 204 behind that. He's got a, a way to go. <laughs> he was involved in our first caution. About the third or fourth lap. Yeah. and ninth right now being occupied by Bobby Labonte and Jeff Gordon. Gordon comes 
comes into this race 12th in the point standings, and that's the lowest in the point standings he's been early in the season since 94. Jerry, I posed the, pro the uh, question a few laps ago. Can they go without making a pit stop if we go green the rest of the way? What's your assessment? Well, Bob's survey says that uh, if we check the, the top four or five cars and look at their fuel mileage calculations, that if we stay green, they will need one more pit stop. But that one pit stop will come with between 20 and 35 laps to go. So it'll be a sprint race after that final stop. If we stay green, one more stop. Then we're on lap 360 to 375. Okay. And, you know, Ricky Rudd, We've noticed has that very good race car all day. Watch as he closes in on Dale Jarrett and Dale Earnhardt. He and Earnhardt seem like they've run together all day long. Oh, Ooh, wow. I wondered how he's going to pull that off. Wow, <laughs> oh, just home behind Spencer. And just ahead of Gordon, that's Bobby Labonte, who was running at eight spot. And can he get it cranked up to save a lap? No, he didn't. Well, that means that uh, they pit now and can go the rest of the way. And it also means that uh, all those cars that were ahead of Rusty Wallace will be able to go around the racetrack and fall in behind him. That's right, because Dale Earnhardt was 11 seconds behind Rusty, and right now he's going to be about 11 hundredths of a second behind <laughs> Rusty Wallace. Here comes Rusty already headed towards pit road. Rusty and Michael Waltrip and Ken Schrader coming in. Here's John Curtin. Second place car, Michael Walter was in a four tire change, also a track bar adjustment. The car had gotten a little bit loose on the right sides are already on. They come around to the left side, making those up one pump, two pumps, cars in the air. Left side's going on. There go the lug nuts and Bill Weber. Most of these guys should be able to reach the finish for here. It's four tires and fuel for Rusty Wallace. Back to the original air pressure in the left front and the two rear tires up a half pound and all three Rusty's away. Have to watch out for the 40. Jerry Punt. This would be the final stop, as you said, for most of these cars, including Ward Burton, right side tires. Ward saying it's tight in the middle. He is spinning the rear tires coming off. They made a slight air pressure change. Left side tires going to the Caterpillar Pontiac. Now, Ward's going to be very careful. The 40 Marlin right in front of him. He squeezes by Sterling Marlin right in front of Jeff Gordon. He's away. Bobby Hamilton comes out, so does Sterling Marlin. Let's take a look and see what happened to Bobby Labonte, and we'll see if there's some contact between Bobby and Jeff Gordon. Well, we're going in the third corner right there at the contact, and we see the damage on the right front fin of Jeff Gordon's car. And around goes Bobby Labonte, and he's now lapped down. 366 laps complete now. The goodies Body Pain 500 were under caution number 11. From the leader in ride control technology comes the latest in a long line of innovations. Introducing the revolutionary new Reflex Shock from Monroe. With impact sensor technology that shifts between firm and soft compression in just 12 milliseconds. Combining superior comfort with a dramatic reduction in pitch and roll for maximum safety. Experience the new standard in comfort and control with a new Reflex Shock from Monroe. Fuel up with breakfast at Denny's with two-time NASCAR champion Terry Labonte. Nothing slows Terry down like the new and delicious Kellogg's Country and Specialty Slam and Country and Specialty Slim Slam. Try them and get your free game piece and you could win a trip to meet Terry Labonte plus $25,000. Come on, Terry. Hey, man, it's the only thing I do slow. Fuel up with breakfast at Denny's. What's going on? Hey. Wow, this is nice. But I thought Stacy said if you bought new tools, she gets a new dining room set. Yeah, she did. So where are the table and chairs? You're standing on them. 
fine woodworking tools from Bridget. Name proven by pros since 1923. Take our portable table saw. Made in the USA, its compact design makes it great anywhere. Bridget, buy them at the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Uh, whoa! Mmm, lawn weeds, huh, Pete? Yeah. All you need is Ortho Weed Be Gone. Kills more weeds than other brands. Didn't hurt my lawn. We guarantee it. Leave it to Ortho. Call it a bonanza, an extravaganza. It's how you save on tires. Now at Pep Boys, all 35,000-mile tires are four for only $99, and all 70,000-mile tires, four for $169. Pep Boys, cars like us, people love us. Back at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, and the Goodies Body Pain 500, 369 laps are completed as the pace car pulls off the racetrack. We are set to go back to racing. It's Rusty Wallace, Michael Waltrip, Ken Schrader, Dale Earnhardt, and Ricky Rudd. And as they get to the five ball, we need to make mention the fact that John and Brady did get his lap back on this caution, so uh, now we have 16 cars on the lead back. Michael Waltrip runs second. His last top five was a little over a year ago at Daytona. His career best short track finish in 107 races. Fifth, that was in Bristol in April of 94. And Rusty Wallace is sideways as Jeff Burton gets his lap back. Yeah, I think they made, made a little contact there. And that's why Rusty got sideways. Now Mike Skinner's up there. He's a couple of laps down. Trying to get a lap back. puts Jeff Burton back on the lead lap. Yep. He is in the 17th position. And there's Dale Earnhardt trying to get on the inside of Kenny Schrader and take over third spot, and he does. And does with ease. Schrader's last top five was at Richmond in September of 98. He finished fourth. Ricky Craven is in, in the pits, a stop-and-go penalty, and we understand that Steve Park might also get one. He's getting the black flag. Uh, for passing on the wrong side, that would mean passes on the inside. Before you get to the start-finish line on a restart, you got to pass on the outside. Looking back from our leader, Wallace, to second place, Walter. Right on his back bumper, Walter's back bumper is Dale Earnhardt as Steve Park comes down pit road in his pencil Chevrolet to take that penalty. Also the one here for Martinsville. Mike Skinner, one lap down now, 23rd position. There are 17 cars, as you can see on your rundown up in the upper left, on the lead lap. One hundred twenty-five laps to go. Rusty has led 282 circuits so far. There have been seven leaders and 13 lead changes. The leaders have been Wallace, Earnhardt, Schrader, Skinner, Bobby Labonte, Ward Burton, and Michael Walker for a lap. Average speed, 72.752 miles an hour. And Jeff Burton has pulled away from Rusty Wallace and Mike Skinner. So right now, Jeff Burton has a good race car. He's the fastest on the track. When Rusty Wallace had that flat tire, and then something has happened. I don't know exactly what has happened, but there's something happened. It's probably to the brakes. He may be, may be just taking it easy to the brakes, or maybe they've noticed something that they told him, you need to take it easy with the brakes. Well, I'm sure one thing would be, don't let that happen again. Wallace recorded four straight wins here in 93 to 96. Now Earnhardt looking for second. Now Earnhardt was faster than Rusty before this caution came out, but Rusty was in heavy traffic, so it don't have that much to do with it. And the Rich Bickle and Robbie Gordon cars have just come together, and that puts Bickle's car down in the grassy area on the left side of the curb. In and he's stuck. And the caution flag is once again out. And Jeff Burton is going to be able to get that lap back, of course. Mike Skinner got one of his back. Yep. 
is over in turn number two. There it is, near the exit of pit lane. And I think with all the rain we had yesterday that it's just so soft there, and he's stuck. Because I did see the car fire. Here's a replay. And there's a contact. Oh. Wow. Robbie Gordon, and he goes in, and not a lot of contact with the inside retaining wall. Most of the contact was with Robbie Gordon's car. Nevertheless, with Bickle's car stuck down there, we do have another caution working for us here at Martinsville. Well, the NASCAR 2000 season rolls on, and here is a NASCAR 2000 moment brought to you by Hasbro Winter Circle, and here's Bill Weber. Well, Bob, Rusty Wallace has six wins here at Martinsville, but he believes a year ago he could have gotten win number seven. He had a dominant car. He led 177 laps in the race.